was really kind of at the heart of the charismatic renewal from the beginning because the Holy Spirit reveals to us that Jesus is Lord. Let's sing Jesus is Lord. I hopefully you know this song. Jesus is Lord. Do you know that one? Jesus is Lord. 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 Amen. I say that He is Lord. So let's remind each other of the two scripture verses that I quoted to you at the beginning of my first talk. The first one, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, what was it? Nothing is, Nothing is impossible to God. Let's all say it together. Nothing is impossible to God. Amen. Amen. And the second one, Jesus said to the father of the epileptic boy, All things are possible to the, to the one who you believes. You were listening. You were listening. You remember. That's right. Oh, let's say it all together. All things are possible to the one who believes. Amen. Is there anybody here who believes? Anybody? Amen. Almost all of you. <laughs> Praise God. We believe. And so all things are possible. And let me ask you this question. How many here need physical healing in some way? <laughs> oh my goodness, what a bunch of sickies. <laughs> wow, almost all of you. The Lord has his work cut out for him. How many of you need healing of the heart in some way? Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> all right, well, like I said, you're in the right place. We're, we are here with the healer who loves us more than we can imagine. And we are here together in his name, and we're going to call upon him. And we're going we're gonna to pray with expectant faith, and Jesus is going to heal today. Amen. Amen. Well, a few years ago, the Lord led me to really study and dive into the topic of healing. God's healing, miraculous healing. And he led me to not only study what scripture says about healing and study what the church teaches about it, what saints have said about it, but I really knew the Lord was calling me to witness his healing. And so there was this time period about 12 years ago now where I really dived into the topic of healing And I went on a mission to Brazil for two weeks where I saw incredible healings and it changed my life. And I became deeply convinced that the Lord Jesus Christ loves to heal. Amen. Far more often than we think. And that he loves to use ordinary people to do it. Ordinary, little old you and me. He loves to be his instruments of healing. And since that time, I have seen so many amazing healings. And I've seen so many ordinary people, just regular people who love the Lord, learn about healing, learn about how to pray for others, how to do it in a, an appropriate way, in a way that shows love and respect, in a way that is, is really in faith, believing in the Lord. And they see miraculous healings. In fact, we are living in extraordinary times. 
I think because of the intensity of the spiritual battle right now, the Lord is pulling out all the stops. He is pouring out his Holy Spirit on the church in an amazing way with signs and wonders and healings and miracles on a scale that probably has not been seen since the early church today. Because the, the battle for the hearts and minds of this generation is very intense, especially for the young. Does anybody here see young people being seduced by a godless culture, pulled away from the Lord by media, social media, entertainment, even schools? Anybody see that? Only a few of you? Well, it's happening. It's happening. There's so many forces that are trying to pull young people, especially, away from the Lord and in, into a, a, a life that is purely secular, is purely going after the gods of this world, sex, money, and power, basically, the idols of the age. And because of that intense battle and, and the fact that so many people in our time have walked away from the Lord and have walked away from the church and the sacraments precisely for that reason. The Lord is inviting back his children by pouring out his Holy Spirit in an amazing way with signs and wonders. And so one of the things that I, I found out when I did that study of healing 12 years ago was a scripture verse I had never noticed. I had read it before, but I never really noticed. But it's, a, it's such a beautiful passage. It's in the book of Exodus. And it's when God has, he has led his people out of slavery in Egypt. He has brought them across the Red Sea into the desert. And they're about to spend some quality time with the Lord in the desert for 40 years. And the Lord gives himself a new name. He says to them, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, your healer. Exodus 15, 26, if anybody wants to look it up. And I noticed that one of the beautiful banners here, by the way, these are all wonderful banners. It's great to see all these groups here. One of them, um, at Elam has Exodus 15, 27. That's the very next verse. So maybe you can remember it that way. Exodus 15, 26, God says, I am the Lord, your healer. And God is saying there, you cannot separate healing from who I am. It is my very nature. It is my character my personality to heal my people. It is my character to bring my people whom I created to the fullness of life that I intend for them. It's not my intention to leave them broken and wounded by sin and by the fallen world. I am the Lord your healer. Amen. Amen. In Hebrew, it's Yahweh Rofeka. Yahweh Rofeka. The Lord, your healer. Or the Lord who heals you. God is giving himself that name. Now, the people of Israel didn't always experience God's healing. Because so often they, they wandered away from him, they disobeyed him, they worshiped false gods. <laughs> And they suffered the consequences of going after false gods, just like people in our time. And they experienced the brokenness of being away from the Lord. But God didn't give up on them. 
He sent them prophets. And the prophets promised that one day a Messiah would come who would bring them to the fullness of life that God intended. And the way that Messiah would be known was by his healings. In that day, the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame man will leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute will sing for joy. Isaiah prophesied that. And then what happened when Jesus came? Well, as I talked about, the Holy Spirit came upon him at his baptism. He walked under an open heaven. He began to proclaim the gospel. He gave that first sermon in the synagogue at Nazareth that I spoke about. Anybody remember the chapter and verse? Well, see, how, see how well you were listening. Well, first, what gospel was that in? Luke, chapter 4, verse? Wow. Luke 4, 18, that's right. And Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bring liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. He was saying, I am Yahweh Rafika, the Lord, your healer. And I have come to do what God promised. He said that at the beginning of his public ministry, and then he did it. From that point on, on every page of the Gospels, there are healings. Physical healings, like opening blind eyes, and also spirit, spiritual healing, healing of the heart. Healing of people who were broken by the rejection of others. So I wanted to share about one, one or two of them. One beautiful healing is when a leper came to Jesus. So here's a man with a deadly disease. He came to Jesus and knelt down and he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And it's a very moving scene because everybody in that culture knew that leper shouldn't be there. He wasn't allowed to be there. According to the law of Moses, anybody with leprosy, this deadly contagious disease, had to live apart from other people, stay away from people. He also, any leper had to wear